Hi everyone, this is Mom Jill Irish Trinidad and today we will discuss about describing mathematical system. Ano nga ba ang mathematical system? Sabi, a mathematical system is a structure that consists of undefined terms, defined terms, axioms or postulates, and the theorems. Isa-isahin natin ang bawat isa. Let's start with undefined terms. When we say undefined terms, these are the terms that do not require a definition but can be described. Ibig sabihin, hindi na natin siya i-define kasi nga siya ay undefined, no need to define it, but we can describe it. Another one, it is said to be the building blocks of other mathematical terms such as definitions, axioms, and postulates. Ibig sabihin, pag building blocks, ito yung pinagmumulan ng bawat mathematical terms tulad ng definitions, ng axioms, at ng theorems. Let's have some examples. Tatlo lang naman ang undefined terms natin. We have the point, the line, and the plane. Siyempre, isa-isa yun ulit natin. Kapag sinabing point, it has no size, no length, no width, and no thickness. In geometry, it only indicates location or position. And then, it is named using a capital letter such as the one in the coordinate plane as shown below. Ito yun. Yan. So, ito yung halimbawa ng point. Kung mapapansin, meron tayong point X. Anong meron sa point X? No size, no length, no width, and no thickness. At paano natin siya name Point X. Capital letter X. Okay? So, that is a point. Sunod naman ay ang line. Pag sinabing line, it is a one-dimensional figure with infinite number of points. No specific length, without width, nor thickness. Take note, infinite number of points. Ibig sabihin, binubuo ang line ng infinite na bilang ng points. Hindi natin mabilang yan dahil lahat. Napakadami yan. No specific length, wala siyang specific na haba. Walang specific na width or lapad at wala ring thickness or kapal. Ayan. And then, and then, it extends indefinitely into opposite directions. Indefinitely. Ibig sabihin, tuloy-tuloy yan sa magkabilang direction. It is represented by a straight edge having arrowheads on both ends. And it is named with two capital letters with a small line and arrow at both ends. Halimbawa, Line HK. So, mapapansin nyo, yung dalawang endpoints niya, yung H at yung K, at yung symbol ay ganito. Straight line na may dalawang arrow sa magkabilang dulo. So, let's have an example. Ah, ito muna. It can also be named by a single italic lowercase. So, pwedeng line G. Okay, pakita natin. Ito ngayon yan. Diba sabi kanina, name natin siya as line HK. Bakit kaya HK? Kasi may dalawang endpoints tayo na H at K. Ayan. Pero hindi actually yan endpoints kasi we, it does not end there. Pero yan lang yung magre-represent ng kanyang name ng line. Or, it can also be named as line G. Ito yung G. So, we have two ways to name the line, ha? It could be two points on that line or one small letter on that line. Okay. Let's proceed. Yan ang kanyang symbol. It, it, take note of the symbol, ha? Let's proceed with the plane. Plane naman is a flat surface where infinite numbers of lines can lie. It has no specific length and width and without thickness. It extends indefinitely in all directions. Ibig sabihin, all directions din yan, tuloy-tuloy din yan. And then, a plane is commonly represented as a figure that can be named by a single letter or by three points where not all in the same line. Okay, ulitin natin ha. Flat surface siya, tapos maraming lines ang nakokontain niya. Walang length, walang width, at walang thickness. Tingnan natin. It can be named using a script capital letters or three capital letters. Example, plane AHX or plane P. Bakit po kaya yan ang name natin? Ito yon. Ito yung isang halimbawa ng plane. 
But kung mapapansin, ma'am, sabi niyo po, it extends infinitely in all directions. Yes. Ito po ay representation lang, itong nakikita niyo yung figure na ito. Yan po ay representation lang, but take note that it extends on the left, up, on the right, and down. So, tuloy-tuloy yan, walang tigil. Yung nakikita nyo na parallelogram is a symbol lang, or part of the plane lang. And then, let's say that plane has points A, H, and X. Kaya, mananame natin itong figure na ito, itong plane na ito, as plane A, H, X. Or, pwede rin naman na sa figure, makakita kayo ng maliit na letter na ganyan. You can also name that plane as plane P. Okay po, I hope malinaw. Let's proceed with defined terms. Pangalawa, nauna na yung undefined terms, now we proceed with defined terms. These are the terms of mathematical system that can be defined using the undefined terms. Diba sabi ko kanina, yung undefined terms ang gagamitin natin para makapag-create tayo or makabuo tayo ng mga next mathematical terms. So, itong defined terms na to ay nagmula sa undefined terms. These statements is our statements, group of words or phrases that are formed using other defined words or terms. Examples of that are line segment, ray, angle. Marami pa, pero yan lang muna ang ating focus sa ngayon. Isa-isain ulit natin. Let's start with line segment. Pag sinabing line segment, this is a part of a line consisting of two points called end points and a set of all points between the two end points. Pansinin. Ito ang isang halimbawa ng line segment. Meron tayong end point 1 at meron din tayong end point 2. Ang end point 1 ay ang point X at ang end point 2 ay ang point Y. So, masasabi natin that this is line segment XY or line segment XY. Ang symbol ng line segment ay isang straight line lang. Tandaan yung kanina sa line, merong arrow sa dalawang dulo. Pero pag line segment, walang arrow sa dalawang dulo. Bakit? Kasi ito ay may end points. Ibig sabihin, ito ay bahagi lang nung line. Kasi kung line yan, tutuloy yan sa kaliwa, tutuloy yan sa kanan. Pero dahil ito ay line segment, nag-stop tayo sa X at nag-stop tayo sa Y. Alright, so let's have another one, the ray. Ray naman is again a part of a line beginning at an end point and infinitely extended in one direction. To name a ray, we usually start on an end point. So, kung mapapansin, ito naman, meron lang isang end point. Si line segment, dalawang end points, pero si ray, isang end point lang. So, may isang end point tayo, itong point A, at sa kabila ay hindi na end point, kundi arrow na. Ibig sabihin, tuloy-tuloy na siya. Okay? And when we name that, we name it as ray AB or ray AB. Ang symbol ng ray is a straight line tapos may arrow sa isang side lang. At remember, when we are naming this, we start with the end point. Hindi mo siya pwedeng tawagin na ray BA. That's wrong. It should be ray AB. Ang start mo ng pag-name lagi ay sa end point. Okay? Let's proceed. We have the angle. Angle naman is a union of two non-collinear rays that share the same endpoint called vertex. So, alam nyo na yung ray, pag nagkaroon kayo ng dalawang ray, pinagsama yung dalawang ray, tapos nag-share sila ng same na endpoint na tinatawag na vertex, yan ay angle. The two rays are referred to as the sides of the angle and the opening between the two rays determine the angle measure. Ito yon. So, kung mapapansin, ito yung isang ray at ito yung pangalawang ray. Nagdikit sila at nag-share sila ng common endpoint. Ito yung endpoint nila. At ito yung iyong angle. Ito yung unang side at ito yung pangalawang side. Pag pinagsama mo yan, yung pagitan na ito, ito ang tinatawag na angle measure. At ito naman yung vertex o yung common endpoints nila. Okay? I hope malinaw ang tungkol sa defined terms. Marami pang defined terms, pero sa susunod na lesson natin siya, if a focus. Next, the third one is the axioms or the postulates. Ano naman ito? These are the statements assumed to be true even without further proof. 
ibig sabihin, itong mga statements na ito ay automatic na true, accepted na tama na, totoo, kahit na hindi mo papatunayan. Okay? These are automatically accepted as true and valid as most of the time they state the obvious. Ito yung mga tipong obvious naman, kaya accepted na siyang true, hindi mo na kailangang i-prove. Okay? Yan. Take note, postulates are assumptions specific to geometry, while axioms are generally statement used throughout mathematics. Kasi minsan, mama na po ba yung difference ng axiom sa postulates? So, kapag sinabi nating postulates, nagpo-focus siya mostly sa geometry. Pag sinabi namang axioms, focus siya sa general mathematics. Okay? Ayan. And then, most often used postulates in geometry are the axioms or properties of equality. So, kung mapapansin, ang common na postulates natin sa geometry, galing din naman sa properties of equality na naaral nyo nung kayo nasa grade 7. Ayan. Let's have some examples. We have the reflexive property. Reflexive property, ay limbawa yan, A is equal to A. B is equal to B. 7 is equal to 7. So, itong reflexive property, para ka lang nananalamin. Kung ano yung nasa kaliwa, siya rin nasa kanan. Halimbawa, um, 9 is equal to 9. M is equal to M. Reflexive property. Then, meron din tayong symmetric property. Halimbawa niyan, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Baliktaran lang. Kung ang A ay equal sa B, edi pwede rin ang B ay equal sa A. Kung ang X ay equal sa Y, edi yung Y equal din sa X. Pukuha po. And then, we also have the transitive property. If A is equal to B, and B is equal to C, then... A is equal to C. Sabi, kung ang A daw ay kaparehas ni B, at masasabi naman natin si B ay kaparehas ni C, edi ibig sabihin, si A at si C ay equal na rin. Okay? Anbawa, another thing. If X is equal to Y, and Y is equal to 7, then X is also equal to 7. That's transitive property. Then, there are other axioms for real numbers. Ito yun. Pinakita ko pero hindi muna natin i-discuss ngayon kasi sa next na uh, video lesson natin, makikita natin yan. Iisa-isahin ulit natin yan. Alright? Then, the fourth one is theorems. Ano naman ang theorems? These are statements accepted after they are, they are proven through deductively. Kanina, si axioms or postulates, accepted na siyang true kahit di mo napatunayan. Pero ngayon, si theorem, kailangan mo muna siyang ma-prove. Okay? Ayan. These are derived from the set of axioms in an axiomatic mathematical system. So, ang theorems ay nagmula sa mga axioms ng mathematical system. Okay? Next. Parang ganito yan eh. Yung undefined terms, at saka yung, yung undefined terms, binubuo niya yung defined terms actually. But itong undefined terms at defined terms, bubuo siya para ang mabuo mong yung axioms. Yung axioms naman, pag ginamit mo, bubuo siya para makabuo ka ng theorem. So, yun yung proseso niya. Undefined terms and defined terms, down to axioms, down to theorems. Okay. Let's have some examples. Theorem 1. Two distinct lines intersect in only one point. Oh, this is theorem 1. Bakit siya naging theorem, ma'am? Hindi mo naman kasi masasabing isa lang yan eh. Kailangan mo pang idro. Pero kung sinabi sa'yo na dalawang lines pag nag-intersect isang point lang, minsan mapapaisip ka pa. So, it's not accepted true unless na-prove mo. So, ang proof mo, ito. Pag nagkaroon nga naman ako ng isang linya, line L, at magkakaroon ako ng another linya na line S, magtatama lang sila sa isang point, point P. Kahit ituloy ko pa tong linya na to, pati tong kabila na to, pati ito, at ito, hindi na sila magbimit. Isang beses lang sila magbimit. At that, yan ay ang point P. So, theorem 1 yan. Ang proof niya ay itong drawing na ito. Okay? Another example is theorem 2. Ang sabi naman ng theorem 2, if a line not contained in a plane intersect the plane, then the intersection contains only one point. Ibig sabihin, kung meron ka daw line na wala sa plane, ha? hindi nakapatong sa plane, 
Tapos, mag intersect siya sa plane. Or mag cross siya sa plane. Then, ang intersection mo ay magiging point lang. Kasi ganito yan. Imagine you have a paper, tapos tusukin mo ng ball pen. O, ba diba? Ilang beses mo lang mabubutas yung papel. Isa lang. Eh, ma'am, paano pag pinatong ko po yung ball pen? Eh, yan po ang sabi, a line not contained in a plane. Pag pinatong mo yan sa, pla sa papel, yung ball pen, eh, nasa plane na yan. So, itong theorem na to ay para sa line na hindi nasa plane. So, ang, kapag pinag-intersect mo daw sila, ang intersection would be only one point. Again, this is a theorem. Bakit? Kasi, kailangan ko munang patunayan. Hindi ko agad masasabing, ay, tama yan. Hanggat hindi ko na ipapakita ito. Alright? So, kailangan ng proof. Yan ang theorem. Okay, so yan ang apat na mathematical structure ng mathematical system. We have the undefined terms, the defined terms, the axioms or postulates, and the theorems. Next meeting, pag-aaralan naman natin ang iba't iba pang bahagi nito. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Thank you!